Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Tourism is one of the biggest economic sectors in the region. In a regular year, about 230 people work at restaurants and accommodations here in Shetty Camp. That's about 4.5% of the population. Not to mention every other local business that benefits from the flow of tourists, our galleries, gas stations, and more. Because of the pandemic, this year will be different. Destination Cape Breton is expecting about 75% fewer visitors this year. We caught up with a local restaurant owner to see how his business is coping. Later on in the segment, we have an interview with Terry Smith, CEO of Destination Cape Breton. We start with the owner of Le Gabriel, telling us how his restaurant has been affected by COVID-19. Okay, sir. Billy Ducey and his wife Brenda Lee bought Le Gabriel in 2007. Since then, the family business has been booming, attracting an average of 300 people per night in the summer and fall. But this year, COVID-19 is keeping people away from restaurants. Our business in Canada, restaurants on the eastern side here, Nova Scotia, we rely on everybody all through Canada. But the big ones, the big business that come down is Ontario and Quebec. They're huge huge business so as you know Quebec have been hit hard with virus and Ontario so by the time they're clear it could be August September so you know but we will get our locals our locals they, they, they're good for us especially September October when they can relax and move around there oh, we get a lot of locals you know they're great for us so hopefully they'll pull the load hopefully any idea on the numbers? The numbers? This year, if you can average 50 a night, you'll do good. Fewer customers means fewer jobs for people in town. We're used to have, in the dead of summer, it would be about 30 employees. And this summer, depending on the tourists, once again, or when we're allowed to eat in again, I would, maybe we'll hire 10. It could be more, but it'll all depend if we get help from the government. But they've been good up to now. So hopefully they will help the seasonal workers because they will need EI when it comes to fall. A smaller tourism season affects other areas of the local economy. With a limited clientele, restaurants that open will be buying less seafood. Ducé, for example, usually buys about 5,000 pounds of lobster and about 2,200 pounds of crab to cook at the restaurant. This year, he expects he will buy about 300 pounds of lobster maximum and 114 pounds of crab. It's a smaller market for the fishing industry to sell its products. After closing early on in the pandemic, the family says it's ready to try again. Le Gabriel will be reopening for delivery and takeout this weekend. Next, an interview with the CEO of Destination Cape Breton. Terry Smith gives us an overview of what the tourism season looks like in a regular year and how the industry is preparing for this unusual season. Here's our conversation. Could you tell me a little bit about what you do? So at Destination Cape Breton, uh, we are the official destination marketing organization for Cape Breton Island. Uh, so we normally are focused on um, off-island marketing to try to bring visitors to the island. Um, and, and as well, we do some product development work as well to work with industry partners to, uh, to enhance the experience that we, we have to offer on the island as well. As I saw online, you do studies on the type of visitor, for example, that we get during the tourism season. Could you tell me more about that? What is the profile of the type of uh, tourist that we receive in the island? The type of visitor we, we tend to get kind of what we would say is is the sweet spot in terms of uh, most people that that we get are couples that would be uh, 45 uh, years old and older so they're usually empty nesters um, and um, uh, they would uh, they would be usually fairly affluent so educated and and have uh, good disposable income and uh, but but also over the past few years, we've also been targeting uh, millennials. So uh, millennials uh, studies have shown um, have uh, a, a strong interest in travel and uh, and they are interested uh, particularly in things like outdoor adventure um, and, and cultural activities. 
Um, and uh, some people might think because they, they are younger that uh, they don't have a lot to spend and are frugal travelers, um, but that's not uh, what the research shows. The research actually shows that they are selective spenders. So they may come and they might do some camping. They might mix that up with, with a night in a hotel and uh, an, a nice uh, dinner out in a restaurant and things like that. So, um, so those are our two primary audiences. Do you think we're going to have a tourism season this year? Well, uh, I'm confident that we will have a season, uh, but uh, unfortunately it's going to be uh, a fraction of what we would normally expect to have. But, uh, but we do believe that uh, we will be able to open up probably sometime in the summer. Um, and, and initially we'd be looking at uh, um, who can open with social distancing measures in place, and with uh, disinfecting and cleaning protocols. Um, and then hopefully that, that would uh, open up a little bit after that. In terms of uh, markets, so we, we would be looking at initially targeting within Nova Scotia, um, and then that might, might end up uh, opening up to within Atlantic Canada, um, but uh, uh, it, it's probably going to take a little bit longer before we go back to some of our key markets like Ontario, Quebec, and the northeastern U.S. In a normal year, how many visitors do we get in the island? We don't actually have a, a great number of how many visitors, um, but, but it, would be, it would be substantial. Um, we actually do need uh, more uh, information that is dedicated to Cape Breton Island. I can tell you that... Um, uh, last year, if you combine licensed room nights, licensed accommodation room nights, and then um, Airbnbs, um, we were just over 500,000 room nights uh, for the whole year. So, so that, that's a pretty substantial industry. And how much are you expecting this year? That's, that, that's the wild card. We don't really know what to expect. Um, and um, we, we are budgeting uh, based on um, a 75% reduction uh, in visitation, uh, but we're also hoping that uh, we're wrong and it might be a little bit better than that, um, but, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's, it's de definitely going to be a, a challenging year. For the businesses that may open in the summer, what what type of tourism would that be? So anything that can uh, put social distancing measures in place. Um, uh, so, so for example, one of the things that is good for us in Cape Breton, uh, we're, we're probably better positioned than, than many areas in our region is that we've got a really strong outdoor adventure project product. Uh, so, you know, hiking trails or, or if you want to go kayaking, maybe going to the beaches, as long as you keep your distance from, from other people. Uh, those sorts of things uh, are, are things that uh, can be done probably fairly safely, as long as people maintain the, the six feet apart. Um, other things though, for example, like, um, uh, like festivals and events, they will be a challenge. Uh, gathering people together, uh, I think there's, there's going to be a real uh, hesitancy among local residents to uh, to know that that uh, uh, we're just going to throw the doors open and, and invite everybody in. It'll go right back to the way it was. Uh, I I think it's going to take some time before we'll be able to um, put the measures in place, build the confidence up, so that we can we can gather in groups again. So those sorts of things will change. The other thing that we have though going for us as well um, is. We have the Cabot Trail, and I, I think that what, what we're going to see uh, in the short term is the return of the road trip, um, and what better road trip than the Cabot Trail? So, so uh, we, we expect that more people will be doing things like that, hopping in the car and uh, uh, get, getting away, but, but they will, they'll want to know that they can do it safely. That would be in the summer, which month would you say? Well, we're, we're planning um, to, on, on the basis that we'd be able to start in July, um, but um, 
it, it could be a little sooner, it could be a little later. Um, uh, really, that's anybody's guess right now. But, uh, but if you look at uh, the timeline of uh, how things went in, in like China, for example, um, uh, if we followed a similar sort of timeline for Nova Scotia, that would put us uh, in early July to be opening up again. And, and all of this is dependent upon, um, you know, the, the province and the public health officials. They, they will be making those decisions. Uh, we're just putting plans in place so that we're ready um, and can start uh, doing a little bit of promotion uh, when, when they say it's safe to do so again. Just to go back a little bit, do you think we're going to have summer festivals this year? I, I think it's going to be very difficult uh, in the summertime to have festivals. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we expect social distancing measures will be in place for the first little bit and gatherings, uh, larger gatherings will probably be, uh, um, be not allowed or not, not suggested or people might have concerns about being in, in larger gatherings. Um, so so I, I think it's gonna be very difficult, uh, possibly by the fall that that might be opening up and changing a little bit. Um, but uh, but I, I, I think unfortunately that we're probably looking at not much uh, happening in terms of festivals for the summer. Until when does the tourism season season last? Usually, the peak season would would last. Uh, it usually lasts until uh, the end of Celtic Colors, so in October. Um, we've been doing some work to try to extend that by a couple of weeks, even just to to the end of October over the past few years, um, and and then November and December are are uh, slower um, and closed in, in many parts of the island. Uh, but then we see winter has been growing over the past few years. Uh, and it looked like we had, we had a pretty strong winter season this year. Um, so um, so there, is, there is the winter that we can look forward to and hopefully uh, winter in 2021 will, will be uh, strong again and, and we'll be able to open more fully have you heard from business owners, tourism business owners here in the area? Have you heard from them? What are their concerns? Yeah, well, um, one of our main focuses for the, 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 as the start of the shutdown happened, was just advocating on behalf of our tourism industry um, to get the supports needed that, that they would need. Um, and, uh, and as part of that, um, I've reached out and had uh, phone calls with uh, dozens of operators around the island, uh, including some in Shetikamp. And, um, uh, and what we're hearing is, uh, is a real wide range, but, uh, but oh, by and large, I would say that some of the programs uh, that have been announced will help. But the concern is uh, they're not really geared to help. Uh, seasonal businesses or or folks who work in the tourism industry, for example, uh, uh, folks that that would be working uh, seasonally and collecting uh, EI over the winter. Um, it was just announced that when their EI runs out, if they're not called back to work uh, at their tourism position, they can apply for the uh, Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, um, which which is good. That gives them an additional 16 weeks. However, um, we don't know if they're not called back to work or not called back to work uh, enough to get their, their insurable hours, how they will qualify for EI for next winter. Um, so uh, I've asked the question um, and, uh, and I, th I think that's being looked at, um, but, but we don't know that yet. Um, and for um, tourism operators that, you know, between, uh, especially between July and, uh, and October, um, that's where they make uh, seasonal operations. Uh, that's where they make the bulk of their revenues and that, that sustains them for the rest of the year. Uh, if we're looking at a season where um, they will get just a fraction of those revenues, um, well, it, it's a serious concern. And uh, so we've been uh, working with partners, there, there are advocacy efforts happening at both the, uh, the federal level and the provincial level uh, for a, a bigger 
uh, relief package specifically for the tourism industry. And, uh, and so we're, we're hopeful that there's more coming uh, because uh, the, the concern is that we, we could lose some, some businesses that, that will be able to survive. And we certainly want to uh, ensure that there is an industry that's left when we come out the other side of this pandemic. Any advice you would have for tourism business owners or employees at the moment? Well, I, I think uh, right now, um, we just encourage you to continue staying home and staying safe. Um, as we flatten the curve, um, that's, that's the biggest thing we can do right now to ensure that we can open up and have a season. Um, and uh, hopefully, may, maybe do some things that, uh, that you can keep you active occupied and maybe take on some projects that you've never been able to get to in, in the past. Um, and uh, keep an eye on the announcements. We have a, a page on our website um, that uh, if you go to our industry page uh, in the footer of our, our website, um, the, the industry can go there and find out uh, any updates and announcements that, that have been made and programs links to all, all of the programs. So stay on top of those and, and uh, see what, what applies to you. Um, and, uh, and in terms of uh, those who, who work in the industry, as I mentioned, uh, once your EI runs out, uh, you'll be able to apply for the um, uh, emergency response benefit. That'll tide you over. Um, and, uh, and there's work being done. Uh, and, and I'm pretty confident that there will be something done to ensure um, that if you don't get called back or don't get called back for enough hours that you'll be taken care of next year. So, so hopefully, uh, I know it's a stressful time and it's a, it's a really, really challenging situation, but hopefully uh, um, the measures will be put in place so that everybody uh, gets through this. It, it, we won't be... Um, We'll be hitting the highs that we have in the past few years with uh, the tours ministry, but hopefully we can all survive and get through it. You can send us your questions and story tips at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.